Hello friends, welcome to our channel. In this lecture, I would like to explain another important topic based on the bar chart. So let us discuss the introduction of the bar charts. These bar charts were introduced by Henry Grant. Henry Grant around 1900 AD. In his work on production control, Gantt developed the famous Gantt chart, still used on many projects. So what is Gantt chart? Gantt chart is a type of bar chart that illustrates a project schedule. So Gantt chart is commonly used for graphical depiction. Depiction for a particular project schedule. So what is project? A project generally consists of number of well-definable manageable units or activities number of well-defined manageable units or activities that should be performed or completed in a definite sequence. So I will show you here. So observe clearly this is a bar chart. So a bar chart consists of two coordinate axes. So this is along x and this is along y. So this is the horizontal axis and this is the vertical axis means a bar chart consists of two coordinate axis one usually along horizontal axis and another one will be vertical axis. So this horizontal axis representing the time that is in unit days and this vertical axis represents the jobs or activities jobs or activities what I told that is a project generally consists of number of well definable manageable units or activities in a definite sequence that is called the project. So if you observe clearly here in this bar chart okay if you observe here here there will be one bar starting from P2 up to here. So here time unit in days like this is 5 days. So starting from here like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like 5, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, 25 days. So if you observe this bar P. So this bar P will be around 10 days taken from 0 to 10. Means the beginning and end of each bar represent the. So here this is the beginning. So this is the beginning and this is the end. So the beginning and end of the each bar represent the time of start. So this is time of start and time of finish. So the beginning and end of each bar represents the time of start and time of finish of the activity. So the length of this bar. So from here to here. So this is called the length of the bar. The length of the bar represents the required time required for the completion of that job or activity means the total length of the bar required for the completion of the job or activity means the starting the beginning of each bar represents the start of time and end of each bar represents the finish of the time and overall length of that particular bar represents the time required for the completion of that job or activity and if you observe this bar there will be seven distinct jobs or activities that is p q r s t u b means there will be seven distinct jobs or activities like p q r s t u v to be performed for its completion the duration of times required for the completion of these activities are so already this is the example which has the duration so p has the duration from p to he from here to here 0 to here this one will be 
second so that is around 10 days and we observe q what about q the q will be 0 to 5 and uh, r will be taken from 5 to 15 5 to 15 means around 10 days and if you observe s s will be taken from here it will be between 2 and 3 so therefore i am considering like uh, uh, it will be starting from here you can take any value around 7 or 7.5 it will be in between means 7.5 for example i am taking up to 3 so here it will be around the straight line of 3 so 5 6 7 and up to here 7 and here this one will be 10 to 15 will be 5 and this one will be 5 to 10 again 1 2 3 third line i am taking 8 then here 10 to 15 5 this will be 10 and 15 so overall 15 days like that each and every bar represents for example p will be 10 days the total project schedule time will be 10 days and q for 5 days and it will be started at zero time completed in 5 days so overall length of that particular activity will be 5 days so like that each and every bar represents that individual days okay so based on that you will get some conclusion so i will give that conclusions also if you observe clearly that activity p so i am talking about the activity p activity p and q see here both are started means activity p and q can start simultaneously means at a time at zero time that is at start simultaneously at zero time then both the activities are independent means p and q are independent not related to each other however activity q is completed much earlier than activity p so based on these graph charts we can make some following conclusions so what i am telling means both activity p and q are started simultaneously at uh, zero time but activity q completed earlier than activity p why because activity p goes to up to 10 days activity q completed within 5 days only even though both are started at same time but activity q completed much earlier than activity p that is the conclusion taken here and the next conclusion will be if you observe here this one activity this activity r starts only when activity q is complete after completion of this q here activity r is started means activity r can start only after completion of q okay then go to the next activity that is s so activity is s is independent of activity r so both are not related it start earlier than this r means activity r started at sixth day if you observe here activity s started at third day means activity r started activity s started at earlier than sorry activity s is independent of activity r it starts earlier than r and is completed earlier means it will be completed 10 days it will take to complete around 15 days so you can take the conclusion like this activity s is independent of activity r but it can started earlier than r and completed earlier than r okay then go to the activity t so like uh, same what we told uh, like activity r activity t will be started after completion of activity s like that also you can take here directly activity t starts only when activity s is completed so it will follow this one okay then again come to the activity uh, u activity u so if you observe there will be any similar activity started same time here so if you observe here this will be started at sixth day and this also will be started at sixth day means activity both r and u can start simultaneously when activity q will be completed so activity r and u will be started simultaneously after completion of the activity q and again you can make one more statement here also activity r and u can start simultaneously when activity q is completed but activity u can completed earlier than activity r also like that you can made another following conclusion also 
so whatever you are observing you can take that conclusion based on this uh, bar chart then go to the last activity that is activity v so activity can start when activity observe here p and again s p and s are completed so this activity v can starts when activity p and s are completed so this end of activity v marks the completion of the project v marks the completion of project so already i gave this conclusion also here see here all these are the conclusions what i explained step by step if you see this conclusion means easily you will get this one so activity first one activity i am repeating the same one activity p and q can start simultaneously at zero time this is the first one both the activities are independent however activity q completed much earlier than activity p then again next activity activity r starts only when activity q is completed this one like that each and everything what i explained here i wrote here clearly mentioned step by step so you please follow this one then definitely you will get an idea what i explained step by step okay then if you observe the same um, bar chart another one also see here this is the another bar chart purchase and installation of latte so we seen that uh, previous ja bar charts will be placed concurrently means overlapping one over the another so one project will starts after completion of the another project one start project will starts within the project of another projects if you observe here there will be another such type of projects which our activities are represented in y axis and the time in or along the x axis so there will be call quotation for latte so this one will be call quotation for latte and second one will be order latte third one will be deliver latte fourth one will be installation latte sixth one will be connecting to power and uh, last one will be test if you observe here this call quotation for latte it will be around 2 weeks and this one will be order latte will be around 1 week so this one will be around 2 weeks and this one will be 1 week and this one will be totally 1 2 3 3 weeks and around this one will be two weeks and this one will be one week and uh, one week so what is the difference you observe from the previous chart and uh, this chart means here in this chart each and every activity started after completion of the another activity so see here activity 2 that is order latte will be started after completion of the call quotation for latte and again deliver latte will be started after completion of the order latte like that here in this chart we can observe that the activity is running serially one after the another and the previous one what we observe means there will be running parallelly or overlapping each other time lapse so there will be various types of different types of bar charts like this so based on that we can made a conclusions what i explained in the previous bar chart so this is the introduction part of the bar chart i explained step by step i hope you understand this lecture if you thank you so much for watching this video if you really like this video please like this video share it to your friends and subscribe our channel thank you so much